All right, so let's look here. Um, it looks like there's a four by five photo. So I'm gonna highlight that. Let me zoom that in a little bit. Let's see, we have a choice of a seven by nine, an eight by 10, or a 12 by 16. Which one should she pick? Okay, so this is a four by five. So if I do a seven by nine, I can't multiply by anything, so that's out. Um, if I do a 12 by 16, this is times three, but that's not times three, so that's not gonna work. So eight by 10, let's see. This is times two, and that's times two. So it looks like she should pick the eight by 10 inches. All right, um, let's go over here. So it says now that when she does a four by five, it costs 45 cents, assuming the cost per square inch is constant, how much would it cost to enlarge the photo? So we are enlarging it to an eight by 10 and they wanna know how much it's gonna cost. So remember, this is linear, but this is gonna be squared. So if this is times two, times two, then I have to square my two. So in a sense, to convert it to area, I have to square it. So I should be going times four. Okay. So then I'm gonna go 0.45 times four, so that's $1.80. The big thing I want you to get out of this chapter is the idea that linear versus um, uh, squared, because area is two-dimensional, so you have to square it. All right, this time it looks like we have a four, ah, shoot, sorry, a four by five we know cost 45 cents. But this time they told us the total, but they didn't tell us the dimensions. So we have to figure it out. So I have to figure out what am I multiplying that by. So I could go 0.45 times one, 0.45 times two, or I can just go, let me, sorry, 7.220 divided by 0.45, and then it tells me, oops, okay, let's try this again, 7.20 divided by 0.45, and I get 16. So that means I'm multiplying that by 16, and that's the squared part. So if this is linear, I should be going times four times four, four times four is 16, five times four is 20. So it should be a 16 by 20 inch um, picture. All right, let's go to the next one. It looks like they want us to find the perimeters and they want us to find the area. Okay, so looks like this is a rectangle. I'm gonna call this one the small one and I'm gonna call this one the large one. So I can find the perimeter of this small one. Perimeter means you add all sides. So let me remind you that perimeter Perimeter means add, okay, and then area means you're going to multiply, all right? And this is two-dimensional, which is squared. Perimeter is one-dimensional. So I'm going to go 6 plus 6 plus 15 plus 15. So 6 plus 6 plus 15 plus 15, 30, 36, 42, okay? So the perimeter of my small is 42. The perimeter of my large Okay, so the perimeter of the large one, I can do that. I don't know that side. So I'm going to have to use proportions to figure out that third side. So let me do that down here. So I'm going to go 6 over 15 equals x over 25. Multiply, multiply. 15x equals 150. Divide by 15. x equals 10. So that side is 10. So that means going 10 plus 10 plus 25 plus 25, and that's 70. So I got the perimeter of the small and the perimeter of the large. To figure out the area, I multiply. So remember, perimeter was plus, perimeter, perimeter, plus, 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 plus. Oops, I forgot a 25. Okay, but for area, I'm going to be multiplying. So I'm going to be going 6 times 15, and that's 90. And then the area of the large is equal to this times this, which is 10 times 25, which is 250. Okay, so what I want you to see is that when I'm dealing with area, I multiply. 
All right, let's go to the next one. So when I try the next one, ooh, I see a 30, 60, 90. So that means that's 30, 60, 90. Okay, so what's across from the 30? One. What's across from, or what's the long side? Two. What's across from the 60? Grab three. So I've got to figure out one times what number gives me six. So it's six. So that means I multiply this by six, and that's 12. And I multiply this by six, and it's six rad three. So I found the lengths. Let me highlight them so they're clear to see. All right, let me turn it and do the same thing here. So by turning this, it's easier for my brain. So this is 60. So what's across from here is two. That's 30 degrees, which is one, and that's rad three. So two times what is four, so times two. So that means I gotta multiply this by two. I'm gonna move it this way so when I turn it, it's easier to see, is two. And if I multiply this by two, that's two rad three. Okay, so we gotta know our 30, 60, 90s. So that means I have now this side, this side, and this side. Don't get it. Now I'm gonna do the perimeter. The perimeter of the small is equal to six, plus 12, plus 6 rad 3. These two are the same, so that's 18 plus 6 rad 3. The perimeter of the large is 2 plus 4 plus 2 rad 3, which is 6 plus 2 rad 3. So remember, to figure out the perimeter, what did I do? I added them all. Okay. Now I gotta do area. The area of the small, when it's a triangle, the formula for the triangle is one-half base times height. So one-half base times height. Half of six is three, and that's 18 rad three. Let me zoom that out a little bit. And actually, I'm sorry, I think that might have been the area of the large, because this is larger than that one. So that's the area of the large, that one's small. Area of the small, so let me switch. Sorry, some of you probably noticed that. One half, the base is two, and the height is two rad three. Half of two is one, times two is two rad three. So something I should have done is add that. So I added that and I got 2839. So let me write 2839. And then for this one, six plus two square root of three and it's 9.46. Okay, so let me zoom in, and now we're gonna deal with a trapezoid. All right, the way we find the perimeter of the small is we're gonna go five plus five plus five plus 13, so 15 plus 13 is, let me make that a little bit bigger. I get 28, the perimeter of the large. Oops, now, I don't know what it is, but I look. From here to here is times eight. And this is the same, so this, 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 same, same, same. So 40, 40. And then I go 13 times eight, and I get 104. So I go 104. So 40 plus 40 plus 40 Attention is 120, reminder, plus 104 is 224. So I found the perimeter of the small and the, the perimeter of the large by adding. Again, now, see Sandy go grab supply at the table in the quad during lunch. Okay, now I need to find the area. The area for this is 1 half B1 plus B2 H. So that means that I go one half the bottom number plus the top number times how tall it is. Okay, so we're gonna get to that because that's gonna be a workout. The area of the large, one half the bottom number plus the top number times the tall. So we haven't done the tall yet. So I'm gonna do that. Let's find some no space anywheres. Okay, I'm gonna look here. Let me see if I can get my blue pen here. I can't find it, whatever. I'm gonna take this triangle and I'm gonna put it over here. So let's go down here. So I know, I don't know that. I know that's five. Now how do I figure out what this is? Well, from here to here is five. So that means that's five. So that means this plus this is eight. So that's four. 
oh, wait a minute, I know what this is. This is a three, four, five. So that means that's three. And if I know that the um, scale factor is times eight, then I can go three times eight, and that one's 24. And now I actually figured out 13 plus five is 18. Half of 18 is nine times three is 27. 104 plus 44 is 144. Half of 44 is 72. I do not know what 72 times 24 is. 70, oopsies, 72 times 24, and I get 1728. Okay, so now let me highlight my areas in blue. So I had to use this formula here, which was multiplying, and that was for my area. Okay, let's turn the page now. We got a lot going on. Now what they want us to do, I wish it was on the same side, is they want us to take all of what we did on the previous page and um, put it here. So we've got to find the ratio of the sides. So we go to the small figure of the first one, and it's 6 over 15. So wait a minute, I'm sorry, the, small, the ratio of the sides from the small figure to the big figure. Okay, so it's going to be from 6 to 10. Just, sorry, you can't see that. So pick one of the sides, 6 to 10, and that simplifies to 3 fifths. And the same thing for letter B, the small, so I'll just pick 2 and 6, which is 1 third. And then I pick a side, and I go 5 to 40, which is 1 eighth. Now they want us to take all of the perimeter. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it real quick, fill in all the perimeters that we did on the previous page, fill in all the areas that we did on the previous page, and then we'll start it again. Okay? All right, so I filled in everything. Do me a favor, pause it real quick, and fill in everything. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to figure out what the ratio is. So I'm going to go 42 divided by 7, D. And then I'm going to go second PRB, and it's 3 fifths. Oh, look at that. 3 fifths, 3 fifths. So hopefully if I did this right, it should be 1 third. 9.46 divided by 28.39. 0 0.33. It's not going to be perfect, but I think we all agree 0 0.33 is a third. And 28 divided by 224 second PRB to make it a fraction, and that's one-eighth. Interesting. One-third, 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 one-eighth, three-fifths. It all matches. Okay? Now I'm going to do it over here. 90 divided by 250, and I get 0.36, second PRB, 9 over 25. Hmm. Okay. 3.46 divided by 31.17 is 0.111 which happens to be 1 ninth. I'll explain it later. 27 divided by 1728, second PRB, and I get 1 over 64. Okay, here's what I need you to get, and we kind of did this before. This is everything linear, and this is everything squared. So if you look here, I went 3 squared, 9. 5 squared, 25. 1 squared, 1. 3 squared, 9, 1 squared, 1, 8 squared, 64, okay? So what do we figure out? We figure out when it's perimeter, it's linear, it's linear, and when it's area, it's squared, okay? All right, I don't care about this. Let's turn the page. Ah, homework, okay, homework, 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 homework. Okay, so what are you doing? You're doing that page of homework. All right, let's turn the page, and let's, you can do this right now for homework. You can do this right now for homework, and this for homework, and then I don't care about this, okay? Now, I want to show you something, because some of you probably go, wow, that's a lot of homework. I want you to see that you can go to, let's see, this is section 8.3.2. So I can come over here. Let's see if I can move this thing. You can come over here and go down to 8.